Hello, this is Carla Sweet from Scrap and Create, and today I'm here to show you how to build my modified version of PhotoPlay Folio 4. This kit is for six and a half by six and a half little folio. A great little folio, easy to build, takes an hour or so, and once you've done one or two, it is really easy. So you'll need one of these kits. We sell them at Scrap and Create. Um, they come in white and black. I'll be using a white one just because I think it might show up better for this tutorial. We'll see. So Folio 4 from Photoplay. You will need score tape. I like to use 3 8 inch of tape and the quarter inch tape. Something to cut your tape with. We sell these little Lucite tape cutters at Scrap and Create. You will need your pair of scissors. Good old bone folders. Whatever ones you like, these are my two favorite. A ruler. I always like to measure things ups upside down, of course. A ruler. I use liquid adhesive. You don't need this. This is just me. <laughs> I need liquid adhesive on part of my score tape to give me some wiggle room, play room, before I put it down. That This is my handicap. You will need something to write with. We're going to be labeling parts of the elements of this folio. So I'll, either a jelly roll is really good. This, these really stand out with the black cardstock. I'm going to be try, um, trying to use uh, just a pencil for this this white um, folio. Basic gray magnets, the small ones. Now it does come with one set of magnets. I use at least two more, possibly three depending on which folio we're going to be building. So basic gray magnets. We also have these at Scrap and Create. You don't need cardstock. I like to use two pieces of um, the, the 11 and a half by 8 and a half cardstock, either white if you're building a white folio or black if you're building the black folio. 65 pound weight is fine. I use this to reinforce the spine and the back outside of the folio. You do not need it. I like it. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. Paper trimmer, we will be trimming one part of the folio off. Plain old scotch tape, I use this. You'll see how I use it for my pockets. And a scoreboard with your score. I like to rescore some of the elements just to give me a sharper edge when I'm folding it over. So that's it, I think that we got everything. So let's get started. So first thing you're going to do when you remove this folio, if you turn it around, you're going to see this little magnet. So when you open your folio up, get this magnet and put it somewhere so you don't lose it. We are going to be labeling this folio, so go ahead and just take all the parts out. This comes with instructions. Step one, step two, step three. I basically, after step two, I do everything kind of different. Uh, so we will refer back to this once in a while, but I don't follow it just the way they did it. I do things differently, and I will show you my modified folio so you know what we are building. But first, let's label everything. So when you open this up, get those instructions off to the side, you're going to come to a this big piece, you are going to locate this big piece. So this is the biggest piece in your panel, in your kit, and it has an area of score lines. There's a set of score lines here, 
and a set of score lines here. So find this piece, get your bumpy side up, so you have your bumpy side of score lines here. This is going to be the on the inside, the valley score lines are going to be on the back side. So this is, I just labeled it the base of the folio. This is where we are going to be attaching everything to this base of the folio. What I'd like you to do with this base folio, once you have your bumpy side up, you find these two score marks and these two score marks. You're going to have a flap here, a smaller flap, and you're going to have a larger flap here. So what you're going to do, get your writing utensil, and on this left side, you're going to put right inside left, oh my gosh, inside left panel, inside left panel. So write that down, inside left panel. Then you're gonna to come to this center section and you're just going to write down center panel and then put top and bottom. And don't go too close to the top, just top, bottom. All this is gonna be covered up with designer paper, so it doesn't really matter, but this is going to be your right spine, and here's your inside right panel. So get this piece labeled. This is really gonna help when we're starting to adhere everything, and you don't get confused what's top, what's bottom, what's left, what's right, um, what's inside, what's on the back side. So that's the first piece you're gonna label. Next, you're going to get out the second largest piece. This is what they, in step two, they call the accordion piece. So this accordion piece has three panels. One, two, three. And on one end of the panel, we are going to see a scored, a half an inch scored edge here. So you're going to take out this, you're going to just label it the accordion piece. And we're gonna be modifying this in a little bit when we put it in. So that's your accordion piece. So we have those two pieces labeled. The next thing I would like you to locate is this piece. Now this piece measures, it says it measures six and a half. Here's the score line, there's a score line here. There's a score line here. It measures six and a half this way from the score line. And then this is six and they say 6.375, it's almost six and a half. So you're going to get this piece out and you are going to label it the right side flap. Right side flap. So once you've got that labeled, just lay it down. Then you are going to find, let's see which piece. I want you to want you to locate this piece. Now this piece is score, it's a little box, a little square that measures like five, a little over five, five by five-ish. And it's scored on all four sides. It's got score marks on all four sides. We are not going to use this. We are not going to use this, so just put it away so you don't, it doesn't get confused with all your other pieces. Next, you're going to find this piece. Ooh, I didn't write down the, the measurements. This piece is scored on three sides. One, two, three and it measures about five inches this direction and almost seven and a half in this long direction. 
you are going to write on it right panel pocket right panel pocket so find locate this piece measuring five by what did I just say five by seven and a half scored on three sides right panel pocket put that down now we're going to come to this piece this measures about five and a half here's the score scored on one side only <laughs> measures five and a half by six Mm, they say 6.35. It's, it's almost six and a half, not quite six and a half. So this piece scored just on that one edge right there. You're going to label this the center panel flap. Center panel flap. And we'll be pulling these out as we're making them. So once they're all labeled, you just go to your stash that they're already labeled and then it'll be easy to find. Now there's one piece. There's one piece that's scored on three sides and it is three and a quarter inches deep by seven, almost seven and a half long there's only one of these. This one you're going to label C. This is going to be a pocket. It's going to be our center panel pocket. So you can just write down C pocket if you want and then put that down. Now you're going to find two pieces these are also pockets. They're scored on three sides. They measure about two and a half deep by almost seven inches long. There's two of them. So you can put these two together. There's two of them. Put a little clip on them if you want. You're going, to met, you're going to label these as the B pockets. B pockets. Put those down and you have one more set of pockets. Now these are also scored on three sides. So you see one, two, three. These pockets are about five and a half inches deep. And then from side to side, it's like four and a quarter-ish. And there's two of these guys. You're going to label these the D pockets. If you want, put a little paper clip on them. And now we have everything labeled. So as we go along, I will just have you pull out something. Let's pull out the B pockets so you already have it labeled and we can um, put it down and no problems. Now let me show you what we're going to be building. So, so you actually know what you're going to be building. Now this was made with this folio four. It's six and a half by six and a half inches. Let me just show you. It opens up. This is going to be your left panel. This is going to be your right panel. And inside you have your little accordion piece right here. This is going to be your accordion piece. Now this accordion piece I cut down so it just has two panels instead of three, but we're going to use that third panel for something else. So there's your accordion piece. Here is going to be your center panel. Here's your center 
center flap. And here is going to be your center pocket, your C pocket. And then on each side of the center panel, we're going to have our B pockets. They're going to be right here. This is um, the right flap. We added the right flap. We're going to be adding this right flap. Here are the two D pockets right here. And here is the right panel pocket right here. And we're going to be making a little insert for it, but this is your right panel pocket. So cute, cute little folio. And there's the magnets. We're going to be adding extra magnets. So when you see this built, you go, oh my goodness, oops, got a little score tape there. This is so cute. So this is what we are making. So let's get started. So we're going to start with our base piece. And we're going to first, we're going to start on this left side. So find the two score marks here. Remember, this is on the inside. So we're going to start just by folding over at the score lines. And you want to make sure when you're folding it up that this is straight. Most of the time they are, but sometimes they're a little off. So now's a good time to make sure these two edges are flush with each other. They're straight. And if it's straight, Go ahead and burnish it. Get that good crease down. And on this side too, looks pretty straight. So let's crease that one down. Same thing on the other side. Start with the, the inside crease. This score line here. Make sure it looks like it's pretty straight. This one is pretty straight. Same thing. Get that nice crease. And then this one nice and straight. Give it a good crease. So this is the this forms the base of our little folio. It will go like this. Now we're going to be adding obviously a bunch of stuff inside, but what we're going to do now is reinforce the spine. If you do not want to do this part, I will have a timeline written down somewhere in the video so you can skip forward to it if you do not want to reinforce the spine. So let me just show you why I like to reinforce the spine. Does it help with the integrity of the, the folio? No, this is like a 100, 110 pound cardstock and you're gonna be adding paper on top of it. It's going to be pretty stable. But I want to show you, here is another PhotoPlay folio. I believe this is PhotoPlay folio two. Now with this one, here's the spine. It's just kind of wobbly. There's nothing wrong with the book. I've had this now for a couple of years. Nothing wrong with it. The spines are still good. It's just kind of wobbly. Back to this one. This one has been reinforced. This one, it is pretty stiff here. I mean, it moves a little bit but it feels totally different. So that's what we're going to be doing, reinforcing that spine. Now, when you do this the first time, you, you may go, oh my gosh, I can't do this. It's easy to do, especially if you've ever wrapped around a spine in a, in a mini album. This is kind of similar in that, but it's actually going to be a little bit easier the way we do it. So first thing we're going to do with this first spine here on the left side, we're going to measure it. 
The length is six and a half inches. And the width of this spine comes out to about a one and a quarter inch. So this is about one and a quarter inch by six inches long. So what we're going to do, you're going to take your card stock and here is my cardstock. I cut a, a piece of cardstock that's six and a half inches long. And the, the width of the, my spine, which is one and a quarter inches, plus I added an inch. We're going to have this reinforcement come out an inch on this side of the spine and an inch on this side of the spine. So the total length of this cut piece is going to be three and a quarter inches wide by six and a half inches long. So that's going to be for your left spine. So for your right spine, you're going to be cutting a piece from your cardstock. This, this one measures about one and an eighth inch. At least that's what I'm getting on mine. It's, it's not real. You don't have to be real accurate. So one and an eighth inch plus we're adding uh, an inch on each side of the spine. So that's going to give us um, three and an eighth inch by six and a half inches long. So that's what we're going to do. So let's start with the left spine. So we're going to start with this left spine first. So get your piece that's three and a quarter by six and a half inches. And we're going to get our, bring in our scoreboard. So we know we have a one inch wing on one side of the spine. Flip that over and we have a one inch wing on the other side of the spine. In between those one inch score marks that you just made, you're going to add an eighth of a, you're going to go over to one and one eighth, just the first eighth mark to the right of the one mark and you're going to do the eighth mark just to the left of your one inch score line. So that's got your one inch score line and then an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch on either side of that one inch. Flip it around, same thing. So the spine is measuring one and a quarter inches, and then we have our tick marks on each, on up each side of that one inch square mark. I'm going to put um, a line right down the middle just for me, so I know right down the middle it's going to be one and a half plus one tick mark. I'm just going to make a square mark. That's just for me, so I know where the middle is. So I'm going to put this away. So we are going to be folding this piece around this spine. And those score marks are going to help with the folding of the spine. So that's the way it's going to fit. It's going to be fitting like this. So let's put our score tape on. So just kind of mold it a little bit. Remember, valley side is up and the bumpy side is kind of being, we're not totally bending it, but we're making our little form for our spine on those score marks that we just made. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to get our score tape, our 3 8 and a quarter of an inch tape. I'm going to start right down the middle. So I made this score mark right down the center of the spine. This way I just know that I'm putting the tape on fairly straight. I don't want to go too crooked. And even then I still went crooked. Look at that. I still went crooked. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, can I get that out? Anyway, hopefully you can get your straight. And then on either side of that center tape, we're going to be putting our quarter inch tape. And I know I do not hold my score tape roll in the proper way. I've tried it. I've tried to do it the proper way. And I just can't do it. I don't know. There's something wrong with my hands. I just can't do it. So try to get those quarter inches score tapes close to each other and we're going to just go just outside that one inch score line too. Flip it over, do the same thing on the opposite side of that middle piece score tape. Let's see. And you'll you'll find once you do this a couple of times, it may look like, oh my gosh, this is so time consuming. It's not. I just make it look harder than it actually is. <laughs> and once you do it a couple of times, you you'll you'll see. So we got everything covered up where our score lines are and I'm going to go out with my 3 8 tape on the edges because we want to make sure we get it all the way to the edges before we completely fill it in. Got that. And get out to this edge here. Now, let's see, get in here with my quarter inch tape. Then just on this side, and wow, this is covered end to end, top to bottom with score tape. So now we need to burnish this real well. Burnish, 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 burnish. Oh my goodness, I tore the tape. I'm pressing so hard. Oh, look at me. Oh my goodness. I'm pushing way too hard. I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so now we need our pick tool um, to start. Where did I put my pick tool? Now what I do is I am going to lift off this center piece because I know this is going to go right in the middle. I take it all the way off, but then I'm such a weenie. I put it back on, except for a little space where there's actually score tape, and I'm going to use my Tombow mono glue. This isn't the green Tombow. It doesn't smell. It's not tacky. It's a more of a water base. And you're just going to put a little bit, or at least I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. I'm going to bring back my, my base. Now, we are going to be doing this on the Here's the inside left. We're doing the inside left. So we're going to flip it over. Here's our inside left. I'm going to put this, the center part, right in the middle 
of these two score marks. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, but I know that's kind of like the center right there. And I probably don't need my liquid adhesive for this. It's not really that hard to get it centered. But hey, I just like to make sure. See, I can I can still move it around. With art glitter glue, I put it down and it's stuck. It gives you about less than 10 seconds of wiggle room. So this is centered. I'm going to take off the tape and now it's secure. I know it's not going to be moving. So now what I do is I stand it up and I go in there and I pull out the next See, here's my, this is the, the side with the, the glue. I'm going to flip it over because this still is not dry. It doesn't dry immediately. So I'm going to go back up here where I know this is tape in it. And I'm going to be pulling this and I'm going to get my pick tool and I'm going to be pulling out the next piece of score tape. We're still on the spine. We haven't started going around the spine yet. Oh my gosh. Doing this on camera, I can't, and it's hard for me to see. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that out. And that's still on the center, so I know I haven't started going around the corner yet. Now this next piece is our, these are our eighth inch, our quarter inch tapes. We're starting to go around the corner. So you don't want your spine flat like this and you don't want it like this. So you want it like at a 45 degree angle as you're rounding those corners to make sure it doesn't buckle or it doesn't tear. So I'm gonna get my score tape. I'm gonna reach in there. If I can see. <laughs> Pull that score tape. And I'm going to be rolling this edge over. Rolling it over like this. So my my this part is kind of bent, but we're just rolling it over that spine. Get your pick tool again. We're still right on the spine, so we're still going to do some rollover. Bend your paper a little bit and just roll it over. And this is where those score lines really come in handy. It's so easy to roll the paper over. And now we're scot free. We're just on the flat part of this left flap, so I can just pull all these score tapes out and I can just burnish this down. Now obviously you won't be using pink, you'll be using white if you're doing a white folio or black if you're doing a black folio. Same thing on the other side, you're going to go to that center piece you already took it out. We're going to be pulling. This one is actually starting to roll all already. So I'm already going to have to, I must not have got it centered when I put it on originally. Doesn't matter. We're just going to start rolling right now. So I got my, my paper kind of bent. I like to lift it up while it's bent like this and just roll it over just roll it over roll it over easy wheezy get the next one out and we are right on the spine with this one right on the edge of the spine with this one so we're going to roll this over also And now we are no longer 
on the spine or the edge of the spine. It's just a flat surface. So we can just pull out those other score tapes. Burnish it down. And we're done. Done with this side. And basically, you're going to be doing the same thing with the other spine. So that was our left spine. And now we're going to be working on the right spine. So the right spine measured one and an eighth inch between these two score marks. And we add an inch on either side of the spine. So that's giving us three and an eighth inch, six and a half inches. Same thing. Get your scoreboard. Do your one inch on this side. Flip it over. Do your one inch here. And then do a score on either side of that one inch. Do a score on either side of this one inch. And then I'm going to try to go one and a quarter. That was one and a quarter, ooh, one and an eighth. Um, I'm just going to put half an inch. So just, just something so I can put my center tape and I kind of get it centered. So. We got that. Did I get this scored? Let's see. There's my. Make sure I got my one inch. Here's the one inch. And then eighth of an inch here, eighth of an inch here. There. I don't know what I did there. So there's our score marks. And this is just me so I know where to kind of place my, my middle tape. Um, and try to make it straight. So I have a line to follow to make it straight. So same thing, we're going to, here's our bumpy side, so we're gonna be folding in towards the bumpy side, getting that kind of rounded, because we know that's where the spine is, where we did those scores, just kind of round it out a little bit. And bring in our base again. So this is going to go on here, like this. Same thing like we did on this side. I'm going to go ahead and put my tape on and I'll be right back. So I have my score tape for the right spine. Same thing, we're gonna turn this over. So here's the back side, I'm going to Pull off that middle tape that goes right smack dab in the center. I do my, I don't trust myself. Put a little bit right here of glue, just if in case I need that wiggle room. I've tried it without glue and sure enough I stick down the tape and I'm crooked and then I have to do my undo and it's a mess and I go you know this doesn't take me that much longer <laughs> that doesn't take much longer to pull it off and put a little bit of glue there and look I can move it I can move it all around can't do that with art glitter glue very well it just grabs and dries so quickly so now I can just pull that centerpiece and I know this is secure, it's not going to move. Stand it up. Let's go to the middle, pull the next tape out. And this tape is still on the spine, so I don't have to worry about rolling it over. That is still just on the spine. The next piece, 
the next piece we are definitely going to be rolling over that spine edge. So I'm going to pull it, get my piece, and we're going to kind of have it bent as we hold it, and we're going to roll this edge over. Easy to roll once you have those score lines. Easy to roll, easy wheezy. And get my next score tape. And this, now we're, all, we're already on the flat surface, so don't need to roll that part over. And then we just pull out the last of our score tape and we can burnish this down. And now let's go and do the same thing on the other side. Pull that piece of tape out that's next to that center one. And this one is still on the spine. I don't need to worry about rolling it over. We're not on the corner yet. Now this one I definitely need to roll over. I'm going to get our paper bent like this, turn it, and we're just going to roll it over. Roll it over. Roll, 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 roll. Roll it over. And let's see, are we over the edge? Yep, we're over the edge. Make sure I got that all down there. And now just pull out the rest of the score tape. It's all flat here. Let's get my, let's get my head in there. Pull that out. Burnish it down. And now your spine is reinforced, you will feel the difference. So now we got to kind of recrease those score lines again. So just kind of pull it over a little bit, pull it over, work it, push it down. Same thing with this one. Work it out a little bit. We don't want the paper to tear. Probably won't. It's only 65 pound paper. Okay, that side looks good. Same thing on this side. Work this one down. Work this side down. I just like to be gentle. I am a wuss. <laughs> I don't like to go fast. Push it down. And now we have a, our spines are pretty solid there. You, you can feel the difference. And if you want to, you can burnish these down. I usually do a light creasing. And the other side. Now we have these panels that do not have extra paper on them. I like to go ahead and fill it out so I don't have any drop-offs. I mean, you're going to be putting um, designer paper here, but I like to have this all smooth and it, it reinforces this, this whole base piece anyway. So what we're going to do next is we're going to be measuring on the back side the space from here to here. 
which is, let's measure this. This is basically five and a half inches. So this is going to be five and a half inches wide. And we know it's six and a half, since you can't see me writing, six and a half inches long. So from here to here, it's about five and a half inches. From here to here, it's six and a half inches. Now this may be a little bit different for you, so you always measure it, because you may apply this a little bit different than me, and maybe you're off a quarter of an inch on either side. So just measure this space. So you're gonna cut a piece of cardstock this long, then you're going to measure between here and here. This is basically four and a half inches wide by six and a half inches long. And then this last piece is basically two and a half inches wide by six and a half inches long. So you're going to get your other piece of cardstock and you're going to make those cuts. Now one thing I didn't say when you were cutting these out, but you want to make sure when you cut out these spine edges, doesn't matter so much for these flat pieces here, but on the spine where it's going to be bending, you want to make sure that you have this long part, the long part of your spine is going with the grain of the paper. And this, the grain of the paper is going this way. You can tell just by feeling the paper. This is bending easier than, than this. So usually with these, the grain of the paper is going the, the length of the paper this way. But always check your paper, see which way is the grain of the paper. It, it'll make it much easier to, to roll over your spine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those pieces and I'll be right back. So I have my pieces cut and you're just gonna make sure they fit there okay. Don't need to do any trimming. That looks good. This looks good. And this last piece looks good. So I've already put my score tape on all of these and I burnished them. So I'm going to go ahead and attach them and then I'll be right back. I always use score tape. I don't like to use glue. I just don't like the possibility of any warping on the paper at all. So I know it's labor intensive with the score tape, but it just will give you um, a nice smooth surface, no possibility of warping. So I'm gonna attach these and I will be right back. So we have all our pieces attached. Let's go ahead and burnish those real well. So now we are done with the reinforcement. And now you have, if you feel this, this feels solid. This feels good. So now we are ready to start adding, going on and adding our stuff on the inside. So now we're ready to construct do some inside construction. We are on part two if you're look, following along with your instructions here. So part two, you're going to locate this accordion piece. So you've already marked it, the accordion piece. Remember there's one, two, three panels. Here is the edge that's been scored. We're going to put it in our trimmer and re-score, put it in our trimmer put it in our scoreboard and re-score it. Valley side up. 
half an inch score, fold it in. Give that a good creasing. So we are going to be attaching this like this, where this is side is going to be down. So we're going to be putting our score tape right in here. But first, before we do that, remember I said this is our, my modified version. We're only going to have two panels. We're cutting off the third panel. And we're cutting off the third panel. What I want you to do is get that third panel, fold it in, give it a good Make that nice and smooth, crisp edge. We are going to be removing that panel, this third panel. We are going to go in one eighth of an inch. So what I do is I just mark down one eighth of an inch, put a little tick mark here, and then I'm going to put it in my paper trimmer. Get my one eighth, and however you want to do it is fine. I just line it up with where I know it's going to be cutting, and I'm just going to take that part off. So this is what you have. This is what you're removing. This third panel with this eighth inch, eighth of an inch little piece. Save this, we are going to be using this for something else. So go ahead and put your score tape on here. So we have our score tape on, it's burnished. Now you are going to be al aligning this with the second square mark. Not this one, but this one. So it's going to be going like this. I know it's hard white on white, but it's going to be, this flap is going to be aligned top to bottom right here. Make sure you're a little to the left of the score line. You don't want it to interfere with the closing of your spine. Align it top to bottom so this edge, which you cannot really see, is straight and this edge down here is straight. So I'm going to do my little wiggle room glue you guys can put this on any way you feel comfortable with. So I attached my accordion piece right here. So we have our two panels. Now with this panel like this, you want to have this one folded in this way. So give that a crease. So it's going to be like this. So here's where you attached it. It's going to be like this, standing up. So it's going to roll over this way. And here you have your little eighth of an inch reveal. Let me show you that just so you see what's going on. Here's our accordion. Here's our accordion. It's folded like this. So. This is folded like this. Folds this way, so it's going to be folding this way. We have our eighth inch reveal. You can see the eighth inch reveal right up in here. This is going to be our eighth inch reveal right up in here. This little flap right here 
is actually going to be made from the third part of the accordion piece that you just cut off. I'll show you that later. So now we have the accordion piece attached. The next step is you're going to be locating your right side flap. Now this is actually step nine, but we're going to be adding, we're not following the steps in order. So like, locate your right side flap. This is six and a half by 6.375 and it's scored on one edge. So locate your right side flap and we're going to rescore it. So valley side up, bumpy side down and just rescore it at the half an inch. Put your scoreboard away. Fold it in towards the bumpy side. Give that a nice crisp edge. And then you're going to be applying your tape to this edge right here. So here's your bumpy side, you've folded it in, and you're going to be applying your tape right here. So let's put our tape on. Burnish that down. actually like my other scoreboard, my other score, my other bone folder better. I don't know where I put it. This one slips on me. Maybe because I'm not strong enough, but it slips on me. So same thing. We are going to be applying this facing that accordion one we just put in. Same thing. This is going to be facing not this, not this score line, but this score line. So we're going to Plop it down right here, center it top to bottom again along this score mark right here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and come right back. So we have, I found my bone folder. <laughs> brush that down. So we have our right side flap facing the center panel. We have our accordion piece and they are facing each other, facing the center panel. So now we are going to locate your center pocket. Center pocket. Let's see, where's my center pocket? So we have one center pocket, number C. So let's get that out. Going to rescore the three sides. Remember, valley side up. So we're just going to do half an inch. Half an inch. And half an inch. Good. So now we're going to miter those corners and most of you already know how to do this. You just cut through where those two score lines cross at the X and just cut right through them. So Obviously, this is the bottom of your pocket. This is the top. And I like to just put a little <clears throat> cut in on the top of the pocket. Pocket, you, you put your um, scissors right by the score line and just go down a little bit. There's a the score line, turn it in and cut it down. And now we're going to go ahead and apply our score tape.
make sure I put it on the right side. Yes. <laughs> okay. Put my score tape on. And I actually cut the score tape at a little angle too. So get my that there. So when I'm tearing it, I'm tearing it at a little angle. Then I can put it down on the other piece at a little angle down over here. So burnish those. Now this pocket, clean this up. This pocket is going to be obviously the center panel bottom pocket. And you are going to affix this. The pocket will be at the edge of the panel down here. And the sides you're going to center so it's right center to center, um, side to side. And you're going to affix this at the bottom edge of this pocket. So I'm going to just undo the bottom one, not the side ones right away. Just do the bottom one. And of course I have to do it my, my way with the glue. Sorry. Put that down. Get it centered side to side. Make sure the reveal on side to side is the same. Looks pretty good right there. And I'm going to pull that tape and I just pull it a little bit at a time <laughs> shows you what a Freddy cat I am a little bit at a time have you ever pulled it and it just shifted everything just shifted on you and it's like oh my goodness yeah there oh I got a little bit of glue coming out there let me wipe that wipe that where's my wipe that off I guess I put a little bit too much there. Okay, so this is where our scotch tape is going to be coming in. Now, without scotch tape, if you have, let me get this, if you have something that you're going to insert into the pocket, it's going to hit, if you can see that lip, it's going to hit that lip right there and so when you put something in there oh my god you're hitting that lip so what a lot of crafters do is they just use scotch tape kind of go from one side get it oops it's a little too long and then you just put it over that lip so now we have our scotch tape there. It's put over this edge here. We've covered up that lip. So this just slides right in. It just gives it a place to slide right in. So do that. Now this Probably you can go ahead and just attach it. There's only a sliver of space here and oh, yeah. Sometimes I, I won't attach my my pockets until I've I've put my designer paper here and then put it down But there's not much space here. So go ahead and just attach this pocket The side pockets you can attach now. Just do 
one side, get that straight, go over this one, branch down. Good, so now we have our center pocket installed. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to locate your center flap out of your stash. So let me grab mine. So here's the center flap. So we're going to go ahead and rescore this. I guess it would be actually easier if we rescored everything all at once and not do it one at a time. Um, that would actually be probably be better. But my brain just, I have to do like one thing at a time or I just get myself confused. So I'm doing one section, one at a time. But if you guys think it's better just to go ahead and rescore it, rescore everything at one time, do that. Especially if you make these again and you figure out how to do this, you can put it together so quickly. I find this relaxing and I don't try to rush, as you probably have seen. Don't try to rush. Now we're going to be putting our score tape back here and we're going to be attaching this to the top here. So go ahead and add your score tape. Burnish that down and I'm going to do my typical I'm going to add my little sliver of glue does anyone else do this does anyone else have problems like me you put you put it down score tape doesn't go down straight you go oh my gosh it's not straight a lot of people can say they can live with it. Oh, it's not straight, I can live with it. Not me. I'm one of those that just looks at it and goes, I can't live with it, what am I gonna do? So now this piece, I'm gonna rip it out, that's what I'm gonna do, so I use my glue. So now this piece, you're going to have it flush with the top of the folio here, and you are going to make sure it's overlapping that center pocket so that both sides are, are evenly spaced. So you want this pocket centered, this flap centered over that center pocket. So let me see if I can see this. Put that in, make sure it's flush. Get everything looks good. Yes, it looks good. I'm going to pull my tape. Maybe scooch it over just a little bit. I am OCD. <laughs> scooch it over just a tad. I mean, we're talking about a tad tad. Okay. Pull the tape, push down, pull the tape, push down, push down, and now I'm done. Good. Push that down. Okay, so we're set. We are finished with the center, the center flap, and the center pocket. So next, you're going to locate your two B pockets, and these are going to go on either side of our center panel. So once again, we're going to rescore them. Valley side up, bumpy side down, half an inch. Half an inch. And half an inch.
go, go ahead and fold them over. Fold those edges over. Fold in towards the bumpy side, right? Give those a good burnish. And then apply your score tape. Actually, miter your corners first. Miter those two bottom. Oh, my computer just went off. Okay, my computer just went off, sorry. So hopefully this is still recording. So we're going to miter these two corners and go ahead and do this for both your pieces. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my little thing with those pockets, the top part of the pocket, cutting it in at a little angle from the score line right there. And then this is going, you're going to put your your tape on, your score tape, and you're going to be putting them on either side of the center panel. Now with this one, once again, I'll come back once I have my score tape on, okay? I'll be right back. You put your score tape on too. Okay, so I have my 2B pockets mitered, score tape applied, and these are going to be put down on one on the accordion piece. And I'm going to pull in a dark piece of cardstock so I can put it under here so I can see where I'm attaching it at the bottom here better. Because this is white on white, hard to see. Same thing, you're just going to attach it to the bottom. Center it side to side, flush with the bottom, and just attach the bottom piece. We'll do the side pieces in a little bit. So, gotta do my glue thing. Just gotta do my glue thing. Maybe one of these days I'll not be so frightened of this. Okay, I'm going to align this flush to the bottom and make sure that side to side the same reveal is on both sides of that pocket. So now I'm going to pull it and not be so hard with it. There, got it. So same thing. You're going to be applying scotch tape to the bottom of this little lip. Let's see how long I need it. About there looks good. Put it right that lip right in the center of the tape. There, and now we can add our pocket. There's not much here, so we're gonna just be, when we put our decorator paper in, we're just going to putting it, put it into our pocket here. So go ahead and reveal, remove, reveal, remove your score tape on the sides of the pocket. Put that in one side and the other. Good. So now you're going to put the other pocket on exactly the same way, and you're going to be putting that pocket 
on this right flap. This right flap that is facing the center. So put it right down there. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So we have the center portion complete. We have our two pockets. We have our center flap, our center pocket. This is what it looks like in a white folio, the same folio. We have center pocket here, center flap, middle pocket, and here's this, this right flap with its pocket. So it looks so pretty. Once you get your decorate, um, decorative paper in there, it's going, to, it's going to look so pretty. So now we are going to be putting on these two pockets, these little pockets here, which are the D pockets. So you're going to be pulling out from your stash these two little D pockets, and they're going to be going right here. And what I want you to notice on this one, now these pockets, sometimes I've had them where these two pockets are flush with each other and there's no space in between. Um, so I tend, when I rescore them, I make sure all these are one and a half inches all the way around. Sometimes they're short, they're not quite one and a half inches but I want to have that little space in between. I like seeing the contrast of the different um, paper underneath it. So this is what we're going to be doing next, these little deep pockets. So get your scorer. And let's make sure all these have a half an inch all around them. Half an inch. And even at that, sometimes I'll score them like a little bit over a half an inch because I want that reveal. Like this one is not quite half an inch, so and then this one, the bottom part, doesn't really matter, but that's a half an inch. Same thing on this, half an inch. Bottom, half an inch. And the other side, half an inch. So let's fold those and see how they they dry fit. So fold that. Didn't do that very well, did I? Get that. Oh, I got off. Oh. Not sure, I got that okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is I just want to dry fit these. So you're going to be applying these. You're going to turn this right flap over, and these. Let me get my contrasting paper again. Put my contrasting paper here and where these are going to go they are going to be flush with the top here this one flush to the top here to this edge and this one is going to be 
flush to the bottom. So flush to the bottom, flush to the top, and do we have any space in between them when we dry fit it? Looks like, yes, there's a little bit. There's just a little bit. So that's what we want. So if you don't mind, if, if you don't mind, if your two cards are actually, your two pockets are touching and they're just butting up against each other, that's fine too. I just like to have, I like to put designer paper down here and have it peeking out in between my two pockets. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and miter my corners, angle the top edge of my pockets, and put on my score tape, and I'll be right back. So I applied my D pocket, and you can see it's flush with the top, the top part of the flap, and there's just, it's, oh my god, you can't see. <laughs> And there's just a little um, piece of the flap sticking out through here. It's not quite all the way flush to the flap, just a little sliver sticking out. And that's just so when we're turning the page and it's a little bit bulkier here, it's easier to turn. So I got my first pocket in. We're going to go ahead and put our scotch tape here. We are not going to be adhering this down. So put our scotch tape for the back of the pocket here. And, oh yeah, that wasn't... I thought maybe it was too long. It's okay. And we are not going to be adhering this pocket down yet because I like to put designer paper all in through here, top to bottom, right in through here, one big piece. So we're just going to leave this like this, get some, some of my repositional tape and just put it down to hold those pockets in place. And I'm gonna give this a quick burnish down here, get that fold line nice and crisp. And then we're going to do exactly the same with this next piece. So I'll meet you right back after I get this one in. So I have this pocket in, flush to this bottom edge. This is making a straight line. And now I'm going to give this a nice Make that pocket nice and crisp down here. And I put my scotch tape, good to go. Get my repositionable tape, if I can find the end of it. Usually I just have these hanging off my desk pre-cut, so I just pull them, but gotta redo that. So now my pockets are in place. Now we're not going to adhere them until we get that designer paper in. So we're almost done. Yay! Now what's left in our pile? This piece, the right panel pocket. Right panel pocket. So once again, we're going to rescore re re those fold lines. This is basically it. Half an inch. Half an inch. Half an inch. And go ahead and fold those.
go ahead and miter your corners. Where's my good, these are not my good scissors. Where did my good scissors go? Don't know, I have to use these, these are, okay. Miter those corners. This is the top of our pocket, so I'm just gonna angle these in, go to the score mark, and just angle it in a little bit. Same thing on this side, go to the score mark, angle it in a little bit. Now this is the part where if you want to, and you have an envelope punch, you can go ahead and make a little notch here for an envelope punch. Let me show you that. Here it is, I can't find it. So this is what we're installing now. Take this out. We are just installing this pocket, this pocket back in here. So you can either use your envelope punch to make this little notch, or if you do not have an envelope punch, you can just use a circle punch and cut out a little notch right in here. Just mark your center line, you know, make sure you have it centered. You would have it centered and you, you mark it and then you put your, you know, cut that out with your circle punch. Just half, you know, not quite half way down. So go ahead and if you wanna do that, go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and use my circle punch for this one. And it's going to look just like this and I'll be right back. So I found my center. Some of you guys have a centering ruler. Don't really need it, but it's just nice to have. Found my center. Here's my circle punch. This, this brand, the EK brand, which is a really good circle punch, all their punches are pretty good. It has a little line right down in the middle. So that is telling me that is centered. So when I put this in, and I can center my little notch right over that little line, and I'm gonna push down. So I'm gonna bring it closer to me so I can see it better, and then I'm going to get it right there and push down. So there's my, my little notch. So let's go ahead and put our score tape on. And now with this one, when you put the score tape down, same thing. We are going to attach the back piece first, put our scotch tape, and then we, we will fold it over and apply the side ends. So I'll be right back after I get my score tape on. So we are essentially done with the construction of this little folio. Got our back pocket, our two little side pockets here, pocket here, center flap, center pocket, pocket. Here's our accordion piece. Now remember we had that little um, third panel, the accordion piece that we cut off. What I did with it, with it I cut that piece down to four and three quarter inches wide, scored it a half an, half an inch right here, and six and eighth inch long. So this is about the size that we're going to be putting, uh, if you have a four by six ephemera card. And what I did is on this accordion right here, next to this piece that has the pocket, you will be applying it right here. There'll be a little magnet closure here. So it's going to open up. So let me show you what that looks like. So here is this accordion piece in this black folio. So it's basically right here. And then you have this little, like a, it's like a little door. And it will open to a place for a photo, a photo mat right here. And this is where I, I put in another uh, magnet. And the white folio, 
I have it same place on that accordion. Here's the accordion pulled out and here's that center flap. Here's the center here. Same thing. I have that piece cut here and then you have a place for a photo right there. So that was my idea to use that. I didn't like the idea of that third accordion going all the way out uh, above, beyond the edge of the folio so much. So I thought that was a good use of it. And it looks real cute. And one last thing before we go on to decorate our Graphic 45. We're going to be decorating Graphic 45 a night before Christmas using the black photoplay folio for. What I would like you to do is I want you to really kind of sharpen these edges a little bit. What I'm such a weenie. I like to put a little dab of water on a damp lint-free cloth on those spine edges just so I can I don't want it to tear. I'm such a weenie, I know. I go down, give it a good score. Not a score, get a good burnish down there, get those edges sharp, put, push that in. Do that on one, do that on the other one. Give those some sharp edges right in here. Same thing on the other side. Now, you don't have to wet it. The only t reason I do is because when the fibers are wet, they're, they stretch a little bit more and they're less likely to tear. And then the other one, I think I put water already. Can't remember. So now you have a nice square folio. Look at that. Nice and square. It feels pretty good in your hand. We'll be adding magnets in here when we decorate. But nice little folio. So let's go on and decorate the night before Christmas. See you there.